Chapter 26 Where they were was over at Route 31, at the mall place, which is just a big old weed field now. Somebody had found out the bulldozers were coming, so the naughty cheerleaders stayed for half the game and rushed over. That's all I knew at the time. Scooter was waiting outside with two umbrellas. We walked home. Fast forward to six o'clock. Scooter and I are eating. Abby comes bursting in, streaking for the den, yelling, TV! By the time we get in there, she's got the TV on, punching buttons, muttering, Channel 10, Channel 10. She turns up the volume. She sits cross-legged on the floor, her face an inch from the screen. She's panting like a dog. She's totally drenched and muddy all over. Scooter gets a throw rug and some newspapers and makes her sit on them. He pulls off her shoes and socks. You're wetter than a wharf rat, he says, but she just mutters, keep watching, keep watching. After the first commercial, we see. They show the Route 31 mall location. They show the bulldozers coming down the pike in flatbed trucks. And then they show the Looney Tunes, Webb and Forbes, a couple of other students, a couple of grown-ups, and there I am, there I am, the wet one herself. They're all standing at the entrance to the weed field, waving their signs and chanting, No more malls! No more malls! The truck stops. Traffic ties up. Cops come. The TV lady puts a mic in the face of some white-haired geek. It's Webb's father. He says, How can we criticize others for burning down the rainforest when we're covering the earth with asphalt? And then... There I am! Me! Me! Listen! Shh! The mic is in dear little Abby's face, and she's saying, We don't need more stores. We should take better care of what we have. My mother buys my clothes at second time around. And then the camera shows the flatbed drivers parking alongside the road and getting out and going home, and the news switches to a fire in the city. Abby jumped up. We stopped them. We won. Did you see me? She did a cartwheel out of the den. That was me. She threw open the front door and shouted to the world, I'm on TV. I'm a star. I looked at Scooter. Why doesn't she get a little excited? That was yesterday, Friday. The whole story didn't catch up with my mother till today. She came storming home in the middle of the morning and herded Abby upstairs. I went up to my room. I left my door open. Abby's door was shut, but I could hear pretty good. It went something like this. Mom, you can't be going around trying to block bulldozers. Abby, why not? Mom, never mind why not. You're only ten years old. That's reason enough. Abby, I'm ten and three quarters. Mom, don't get smart. Abby, don't you want to save the earth? Mom, I want to make a good home for my children. That's what I want. Abby, well, I want to make a good world for my children. Silence for a while. I guess that was a point for the daughter. My mother must have looked fumy, because then... Abby, you're just mad because I'm against them all and you're working for them. Mom, I'm running out of patience is what I am. Abby, you're fed up with me. Mom, I'm... Abby, you're going to tear my picture down from the wall and burn it and destroy all my dental records so there'll never be a trace of me. Another silence. This time I figure my mother was biting her lip trying not to laugh. When she finally spoke, her voice started out slow, then picked up speed. Mom, you campaign against your own mother, who is trying to make a good life for you. You refuse to eat meat. We are informed that you wish to turn our backyard into a jungle, and to top it off, you announce to the entire world on television that I buy you second-hand clothes. Abby, 
Well, it's true. Mom. No, dear. It is not true. At least, not completely. Abby. What do you mean? Mom. I mean, one of the reasons why your father and I work so long and hard is so you don't have to wear second-hand clothes. But just to humor you, yes, I do let you buy a few things at second time around. But you're so stubborn. So when I shop for you, sometimes, to get you to wear something respectable, I just tell you I bought it there. Silence. Then, squawkily, Abby. You lied. Isn't this from second time around? Mom. It's new. Abby. Well, I don't want it. Here. And I guess you lied to your own child about this, too, huh? Here. And this. And this. And this. The door flew open. Out she came, stampeding down the hall. My mother called, What are you wearing? But my sister was charging into Scooter's room and slamming the door. I'll tell you, if you never saw a fifth grade girl run down a hallway wearing nothing but boxer shorts with red and blue anchors, you got a real treat coming. I swear, if I don't stop laughing in the next minute, I'm gonna die. <laughs>